All right. Hello, everybody. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the administration to send a truck of supplies down to La Rose, my hometown. Uh, they um, met a lot of people there at the Civic Center, the people in need of uh, supplies. And I want to thank the administration uh, for sending that down there. Met a lot. I was going to go down there. Uh, me and Steve Ensminger was on a helicopter. They had to turn around because the weather was bad. So we, we wanted to be there, and uh, we were there in spirit. I want to thank our student, student body for filling up the student section. Wow, what, what a great feeling. And all our fans on the Tiger Walk, uh, Saturday night in Death Valley, our freshmen were fired up, coaches were fired up. But I want to thank all our fans, all our students, for bringing the energy. A little bit about the game. You know, we wanted to improve on the run game. We did. We ran, ran the ball outside. Several players got the football. So I was pleased with the improvement that we saw in the run game. You saw our two freshmen running back who I think are outstanding. And uh, you'll see more of them. But over Ty Davis, I thought he ran the ball well. Uh, we got a lot out of a running game and more to get later on. Uh, we still have some ways to go in protection. We still have a ways to go in tempo and the way we approach the line. And we're going to fix that th this week. And also, we need to improve on third down. It's a combination of routes and protection. On defense, what an outstanding job. Uh, held, held them 51 yards rushing, eight quarterback sacks, tremendous pressure. Uh, special teams, Cade York. Broke a, a, a school record twice, 55 and 56 yarder. So really pleased with that. Um, on the Central Michigan, uh, spread offense, very well coached football team. A physical football team. Uh, 242 yards per game rushing. 34 points a game on offense. A really good offense led by a strong offensive line. Really great protections and schemes. Uh, Jacob Sermon is their quarterback. Lou Nichols is an outstanding running back. Khalil Pem Pemberton is an outstanding receiver. On defense, they run a 4-2-5. They're led by Troy Harrison. He's, he plays like his hair's on fire. He's all over the place, makes great plays. Devon Reed, free safety, outstanding player. All right, tell the truth Monday. Here we go. Any questions? Yeah, yeah, Ron Davis, Tiger Rag. We're hearing that John Emory Jr. may be out for the year because they registered him in a wrong class. What's his status right now? Yeah, uh, John Emory is out the year, and uh, my th my saying he's unavailable. Um, hey, Coach uh, Jared from TigerDetails.com. I was going to ask about John as well as uh, status updates on Armani Goodwin and, and Trey Bradford in that backfield. It seems like a lot of shuffling potentially. Yeah, I do believe that Amani Goodwin is questionable for this week, and it's a shame because I, I think he's an outstanding running back. Uh, Trey Bradford, uh, as I know, will be eligible for the game. We'll have to see how the week goes, and uh, hopefully we can play him this week. Hey, Ed, you mentioned the tempo. I'm just curious, I mean, what is the – what do you think the kind of issue is there? Is it a, a coaching decision to kind of like work – be a little slower, or is it a the players aren't ready? I'm just curious, kind of what the hangup is. Yeah, you know, I think that's uh, more of you know we, we're trying to uh, look over, get the get the perfect play for the perfect defense, and uh, we had a discussion, and we're we're better off sometimes going what we call warp, go fast, and uh, and attack the defense, and we're gonna practice that this week. Ed Ed Daniels in New Orleans, uh, do you think you know? I know Goodwin it looked like he turned his ankle. But him and Kiner give you a little bit of that burst that maybe they can they can make something happen when holes aren't there. And because of that, do you think that that warrants more playing time for, for both of those guys at some point? Yeah, I do believe that they need to touch the ball more. And that's the same thing Ed, I saw in camp. Those guys are dynamite, man. And uh, I think that both of them are going to be great backs. Now, we also like Ty Davis. He runs the ball well. He, he's a bull in there, can run inside, outside. We need to use all three of those backs. Hey, Coach, this is uh, Josh Sidley with Louisiana Grand Football. <clears throat> with as many drops as uh, we're seeing by the number one, or I'm sorry, the number two and three receivers, uh, did they spend time catching the, the 11,000 balls uh, over the summer, or is this just a, a timing issue with, uh, with them and the quarterback? You know, they, every one of them caught 10,000 balls, and they did it. And we had the fewest drops we had Ever since I've been here, we, we registered those drops in any camp we've been in. So that came to me as a surprise. So we're going to go back to the fundamentals, go back to see why they're dropping the ball. Some of them were right on the money. It's, it's their eyes, their hands, what they're doing with their technique. And we'll go, go, go back to technique and also catching balls after practice on the jugs machine. Hey, 
Coach. Uh, this is Glenn West with LSU Country. You know, just doing some quick research on Central Michigan. It looks like they have some pretty dynamic runners. Um, so how, 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 how much are you keen on the, the running back this week uh, for, for that game? And uh, just, just how, how you think the defensive line will respond to Well, the yeah, I think, they're, I think they run the ball very hard. I think they make yards after contact. They hardly go down on first contact from the games I saw. I saw a limited film this morning. I watched their first two games. I think their offensive line is very good. Uh, they have great schemes. Uh, they run all plays that you know normal people are running nowadays, but they attack you. They play fast. The offensive line comes off the ball well, good zone scheme, and the runners back run the ball very low and hard. Hey, Coach O, Garland Gill and Fox 8 in New Orleans. Uh, when you recruited Mason Smith, you knew he was one of the top players in the country. You told us this summer that he was going to contribute right away. What did the film say about his three-sack performance against McNeese State? Outstanding. You know, he had a little uh, arm over. Uh, I thought he rushed the uh, passer very well against UCLA. Uh, he had some great, great moves in there. And uh, we're using him on third down now. He's getting better against the run. He has a minor injury that, you know, he's still playing with, but he's got some bumps and bruises. But the guy is a monster. You know, Cody told me, he said, Daddy, when, I, when my eyes came up, all I saw was number zero every time. So. Hey, Ed, um, Adam Hunsucker. Uh, with the, um, you know, with the offensive line um, kind of kind of being in flux right now due to some injuries, kind of what, what are the status of the three guys you're missing up there? Do you expect to have them back this week? Yeah, I expect to get um, Jason Hines back for sure. Austin Dexas, maybe. Uh, we have to see how the week goes on. And Cam Wire is out for the game. Hey, Coach, so going back to after the game Saturday, it just seems like the players were adamant about this little gap and them playing to their potential. What do you need to do to bridge the gap to get them playing to their capability? Well, you know, just I think practicing, scheme, coaching better. Uh, I do believe that we have the athletes on offense that can go. It all starts with protection first. That's mainly where our breakdowns have been. Now the wide receivers missed a couple of balls, but those guys are fantastic. Uh, I do believe that we can get the ball to our playmakers better in space and let them play. And hopefully we can make some improvement out this week. And uh, whenever you get to Central Michigan this weekend, is there a plan to get Garrett Nussmeyer snatched in the game as well? We'll see. We'll see how the weeks go by. I thought Garrett did well. Uh, Max is our starting quarterback. I thought he did some good things uh, under under some some tough circumstances sometimes, but he he's he he did a great job. Garrett Garrett brought a spark to us. I like Garrett. If I can play him, I'll play him. Hey Ed Wilson Alexander from the Advocate. When it comes to tempo, is that something that you kind of have to just make happen, or do you have to be having positive yardage in order to play fast? Well, both, both obviously. You got to make it up. I think that. Uh, we had a discussion this morning, and we looked at some things that we've done in the past, how we've done it. Uh, we're going to practice it better. We're going to have a session of tempo every week, every uh, every day this week, and uh, we're going to push it more. Hey, Coach, good morning. Um, can the communication be improved between compliance and you guys in terms of things like John Emery, or people are wondering how did that happen? You know? Well, you know, uh, I think – Compliance, I think that uh, academics do a great job of communicating with us. We meet uh, with uh, academics every week. Uh, and so uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. But I think they do a great job. Hey, Ed, um, we talked to uh, Cade, of course, after the game, and obviously he had a tremendous game. Uh, how, how, how far out would you be comfortable with letting him try a kick? Obviously, if it's a desperation situation yeah. to, to tie the game or – or, or, or win it, and it kind of depends on the on the yeah. on the situation of the game. But how far out do you think he could he could legitimately try one and make one? Look, those look like they could go from sixty. So. Yeah, yeah, I tried sixty. Uh, it, it all depends on the game and how it's going. We wouldn't want to do that stupid. But uh, if we we had a nice shot at sixty, I let him I let him try. I think he deserves it. Hey, Coach Matt Trent, WBRZ. I've got two for you. First one, uh, what's the status of Chris Hilton this week? I noticed he didn't dress yeah. on Saturday. Just didn't know if there was anything serious injury-wise. Mm -hmm. um, and number two, I, I don't know if you caught the Saints game yesterday, but 
their offensive line seemed to kind of soothe all of the doubts that anyone had with their offense. I mean, do you think that that's kind of the same thing with you guys? You get this offensive line figured out, and it's going to have a ripple down effect with the rest of the offense. I think so. I think I think you're right. I didn't watch the Saints game. I was I was too busy watching our game to study. But anyway, uh, Chris Hilton is going to be questionable. I do believe that the offensive line has to gel. We have to help them out. Uh, the offense is not performing like we want to perform right now. That's obvious. Uh, I got to do a better job coaching. We got to we got to get some things wrinkled out, get them fixed up, and I think we will do, we will do that. Hey, yeah, it's that again. Um, do you think the UCLA game at all maybe rattled the team's confidence, or do you think this is still like a, a very highly confident group right now? Yeah, I think the confidence, and I think it, it showed that. Uh, we have to get some things fixed. It showed our weaknesses. I like when you play a, a good team to show your weaknesses. Thank God we, 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 we found out what our weaknesses was so we can fix it at the beginning of the year. And I think all those things that happened in the UCLA game, we're working on fixing it every week. I'm running UCLA plays again today because I know we're going to see it. And the mistakes that we made in the UCLA game, some of them got fixed on defense. Now, we, we played a, a lower-tier team. That wasn't as talented as the offensive line. I understand that. But we have to continue to fix those things because we're going to see them again. Hey, Coach. It's Michael Cobble. Um, right on, right around the corner from you here. Um, I was just curious about two things. The check with me, is, you talked about tempo earlier. Yeah. Is that something that you, that, that you guys can eliminate? Because it does seem to be stifling you know, the, the tempo and the flow. Of the yeah. Offense. Yeah, we, we're gonna we, we're gonna minimize the check with these. I can't give them a whole game plan, but you know what? It does. It does give the uh, a defense a chance to change their defense. We've been checking with me, and they have changed their defense almost every time. So we have to look at it. Uh, we have some mechanisms uh, which we're gonna uh, put in this week to fix that. And my other question was: so many guys in street clothes this week made me think that maybe you know it was an, an issue, and, and you don't necessarily need to address what the issue is. But is it is it correct to bowl? Is it able? Is it a one-time thing, or will you be able to? Uh, is it going to be like that? You know, for a Central Michigan game. Uh, as far as the guys on, well, most of the guys on uh, that didn't play were for injuries. Uh, most of them, not all of them, and. Uh, some of them will get back this week. Some of them were not. Now, John is unavailable all year. He's the only one right now that's unavailable all year. Coach, uh, your interview year in 2016, you had a guy wearing 13 named Dwayne Thomas who was making plays all over the place for you. And uh, now he's part of your staff. It seems like he's always, uh, we see him upbeat and, yeah. uh, and happy to be there. What kind of, I mean, I know he's just an analyst, but what kind of future do you see for him? Phenomenal. Outstanding young man, love him. Uh, very loyal to LSU in the program. He's a great communicator. Does a tremendous job recruiting. He knows everybody. Uh, outstanding coach. Uh, he was an outstanding player for us. And uh, I, I do believe when he gets his chance to coach, he's going to be great. Ed, going up against Jim McElwain again, I, what memories does that kind of bring back to 2017, 2017 where you're yeah. coming off that loss and yeah. get that big win? Well, you know, those tough games. Uh, uh, they all, both of the games that uh, we played came back, came back down to the final play. One we won, one we didn't. And, uh, you know, I remember that Florida game, uh, we didn't play very well. Uh, that was my interim year. We fumbled the ball. We made a lot of mistakes, but we still had a chance to win it on the last play. And we all know what happened there. And then we went back down to Florida. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was the game after the Troy loss. And uh, the field goal kicker missed the extra point. We won the game. Very tough games. Both of them came down the last play. Thank you. And I know, obviously, you know, I know you addressed John, but just to clarify, is there any way that he would be able to play this year? Or is that absolutely definite? Who's that? Just to clarify with John, is there any way he would be able to play, or is that definite? Well, you know, right now, he's unavailable. Now, if things, things could change. Uh, if they do change, we'll play them. But right now, he's unavailable. Could they change? Yeah. Uh, but uh, that's out of my control. Uh, hey, Coach, this is uh, Shay Dixon. How tough is it to find continuity on the O-line with guys missing? And did you think any of the young guys look good on film after watching these games? Yeah, you know, I thought the young guys fought. I thought, I thought Martin Martinez fought. I thought Xavier uh, fought. I thought they, 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 they made some mistakes. 
I thought they fought and, and now they, they can go in the game in a backup role. Uh, I don't think they're ready to start yet every down, but at least they went out there and they fought, so I was pleased with that. But we need continuity. We need everybody back. We haven't had it the whole camp. Hey, Coach. Yeah, um, I guess with Armani Goodwin, you know, we saw him go out last week, and I think you guys said he's probably going to be okay. Do you expect him to suit up this week? And then I yeah. uh, also wanted to ask about Kevon Straight Bradford and his, his status for yeah, this weekend. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have Armani this week. He's questionable. Hopefully we can get him back from Mississippi State. And as far as I know, I didn't check, but I think Trey Bradford will be eligible this week. Ed, um, Cameron Lewis is a guy that's been in this program a long, long time, and um, he made the most of his opportunity Saturday. Just there, you know, what can you say about that guy? You know, waiting his turn, finally yeah. getting started, then rising to the occasion. So proud of him. He graduated this summer. I know when we recruited him, we promised his family he's going to graduate from Louisiana State University as the number one object of all our players. He did that. He started for us at Nichols. I named him team captain uh, for the week. He's done a tremendous job. He's a great young man. We're very proud of him. And I apologize if I missed this earlier, but what's Sage Ryan's status at the moment? Say it again. What's Sage Ryan's status? Yeah, right uh, Sage has been unavailable, uh, just a little nagging injury. Uh, we think that he's going to start, not think, I know he's going to start practicing today, and we're going to see how he can practice throughout the week. He may become available this week. Uh, we're not sure yet. Hey, Coach Jerry again. Uh, you mentioned Mason Smith earlier. He and Jaquel and Roy both seem like they've really started the season strong. Um, what can you say about the performance of those two, particularly yeah. when they're there together in the middle? Yeah, proud of you know recruited both of them. It was a hard battle. Both of them in the state of Louisiana. They decided to fight for Louisiana. I love them. They're both great young men. Uh, you know, Jaquel and Roy has gotten in good shape. Uh, he's learned how to play at this level. He's a dominant force inside, big physical guy, LSU defensive lineman. Mason had no problem adjusting. He's done a tremendous job. He's a great pass rusher. He needs to work on his run defense a little bit more. Both of them will be outstanding players. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys. Go Tigers.